at 33 years old, John Ossoff will be the youngest member of the Senate. Ugh. I hope the Senate are, are just, this is so awful. Here we go. I hope the Senate serves avocado toast. But um bum psh. It's a millennial thing, folks. He was the host of the podcast Binge Mode and digital show NBA Desktop before joining us at Crooked Media. Please welcome Jason Concepcion. Jason. Ba, 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 ba. Thank you for having me. So good Wonderful to have to be you. Here. Uh, yeah, look at that beautiful setup. You, Thank you so you, much. Listen, everything is it's uh, LCD lights from uh, Amazon. They're fourteen ninety nine. I highly uh, recommend them for anyone who has to be on a lot of Zoom calls and is tired of watching themselves just slowly decay over time. With each passing month, I turn up the Zoom filter. That's <laughs> smooth. it's getting. Like, I'm just sort of like at a certain point, it's like going to be like. Um, Scotty telling, <laughs> telling there's just no more power. <laughs> we can't shift any more of CPU to filtering out the way being at home for a year has fucked up your face. We can't smooth it anymore, Captain. <laughs> I just slowly move my chair back no, half it's a gotta, foot gotta every get further week. Away. Gotta yeah. get further away. Gotta get further away. All right, Jason's here to judge the monologue. Let's get into it. What a week. Uh, during these difficult times, we like to start the show with the worst joke that was submitted by our writers. And this week, we have one that we think is maybe the worst <laughs> we've ever offered. Are you ready, Jason? Well, it's a historic week, and I'm glad to be here for a historic joke. I guess we finally know what the Trump train sounds like. Coo, coo. I couldn't even commit to it. Wow. I got <laughs> I actually respect it. It's hard to do. It was hard to say out loud. It's so stupid. Look, it's a very serious week. Four years ago, after Trump won, you know, I was worried about institutions. We were worried about the liberal coalition fracturing. And as we head into the Biden administration with Democrats in charge of the House and Mm -hmm. the Senate, the vote certified. I think we can all be proud of the work that went into staying united, defending our democracy and ultimately winning. We are Four years of Trump. Lindsey Graham famously said, if we go with Donald Trump, we'll be destroyed and we'll deserve it. Well, here we are. They've lost the House. They've lost the Senate. They've lost the White House. They've lost their reputations. They've lost their credibility. They've lost their claim to democracy itself. Uh, So uh, I feel like we should um, take a moment to pat ourselves on the back. Does Lindsey remember he said that? Is is he aware of that in this timeline? Does he know that this happened in this version of the multiverse, or is that like another version, like a looper thing? I think he's in a memento situation. I think there's a tattoo across his chest that right. says, John McCain was my friend. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And, but, but when he buttons up his shirt, he forget it's gone. That's gone. Right. Right. We're entering uh, Act 3, where he's going to find the tattoo on his bicep and then realize, oh, I... I, I think I understand who the criminal is, and I, uh, I confronted him uh, four years ago. It's like a, it's a hairbrush. There's a long, dyed, golden hair in it. Uh, the period I was most afraid of, which was the time between Trump losing and Trump leaving, at the period of time mm-hmm. after which it was clear he would no longer be president, but while he still had the powers of the presidency. That was what right. was my greatest fear. And I, and I think it is a sad... <laughs> It is sad that it has come to this. It is sad that uh, that it has been as bad as so many people predicted. Um, that said, here are some dumb names for what the attack on the Capitol could be. Of course, uh, Holly's Folly, the cruise, Ooh. the cruise coos. <laughs> that would. That's a tough. Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, uh, that's a no for me, dog. But again, I respect the work. <laughs> The Whiskey and Red Bull Rebellion. Oh, hi- historic. Historic. I, I like that. The Facebook Putsch. Okay, historic as well. Ben Sass is nodding with approval. <laughs> Does he nod? Does he know how to nod? Has he been nodding? Uh, <laughs> he's like, he's a, he's like a, a take the chair, turn it around, put his arms, sit his arms across the back of the chair and mm-hmm. say, hey, guys. Do you, uh, you know, back in 1858, a lanky man from Illinois took a train, and then he's going to tell you that person was Abraham Lincoln eventually. In a lot of ways, Shakespeare was kind of like rap. Uh, the, 
Uh, the heroic battle where one guy tased himself and had a heart attack. Um, that's obviously, you know, we don't want to be glib. A man did die of, uh, um, uh, what some are calling a heart attack. What I do believe, uh, Facebook posts are referring to as Antifa of the arteries. That's wow. See, you know, it was infiltrated. Um, well, uh, the amazing thing about, uh, about, Antifa of the arteries or any other kind is they are so they're just everywhere and yet as uh, as people have pointed out on Twitter not a single member has been publicly identified so shouts to them for the operational security it's really an amazing organization that's doing great work yeah, I think that um, Raza Ghul has done a really great job of organizing <laughs> Antifa. Also, did you see that? So there was this uh, bit of like misinformation floating around that one of the insurrectionists had a tattoo of a hammer and sickle, and then they zoomed in, and it was the fucking <laughs> symbol from Dishonored. Did you see this? <laughs> They got. He has the the the. What's the call? I played Good that game. Uh, uh, great game, great game. But how <laughs> fucking ridiculous a person are you that you get the dishonored tattoo on your hands? Dishonored? Are you kidding? Are you fucking kidding? The lore of dishonored didn't like make it. It's not that strong. It's not oh. what. Yeah, man. Defending like defending the princess. Come on, at least get a master chief. You know what I mean? I, At least get a Witcher uh, tattoo. God, the dishonored symbol. I, I could not stop laughing. That is so embarrassing. That is so embarrassing. Even a uh, Wario, honestly. Yeah. A little Wario. Why not? A couple more names. D-Bag Day. I'm, how do you make, I'm trying to make that. It's D-Bag Day. Right. You I don't it. think it... Yeah, it's tough. tough. I, I get it's it, tough. but it's it's a tough. It's another tough one to make the connection. But I I get it. Baconator's Rebellion. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, final two. Sweatiesburg. <laughs> <laughs> and and finally, Dumkirk. They're just why not? Uh, yeah, sure. I think that I think the issue with D Bag Day and Dumkirk is those were both like po you know positive battles positive violent conflicts that helped turn the tide against uh against fascism mm -hmm. uh so it but i appreciate the wordplay and i appreciate the work in that sense thank you Thank you. So what happened on Wednesday after President Trump urged his followers to march on the Capitol to undermine the certification of President-elect Joe Biden's victory and a dozen senators led by Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz in concert with most of the Republicans in the House caucus, including minority leader Kevin McCarthy, indulged in conspiracy theories to undermine the election result inside the Capitol. A mob of Trump supporters breached the building, ransacked offices, probably peed in a few weird places and temporarily delayed Senate proceedings. People were calling it a coup, but it was more of a siege because breaking into the government's workplace doesn't make you the government the same way breaking into Tom Cruise's house doesn't make you Jack Reacher. When does that not? It doesn't. Is that not? Is that not? Is it is the Jack Reacher uh, title not transitive in that way? Um, no, it's it's not like Air Force One. You don't it's not you don't become it doesn't you don't become Jack Reacher when you go into places Tom Cruise has been. Oh. Jason, side note, one of my favorites. I did not see Jack Reacher to reach harder. <laughs> <laughs> um, reach around Jack that's the prequel <laughs> but uh, one of my favorite things in Jack Reacher is this is a movie that Tom Cruise is a producer of clearly yes. creatively in charge of and they film a scene in which Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher walks into a bar and every head in the bar turns like the sexiest coolest person walked into the room and this is a private investigator who travels by bus and is paid through yes. Western Union. <laughs> right. Carries cash only, has no ID. And that was just, I love that note. I just like coming him coming back to the screens, talking to his buddy, the director, and saying, I think we need all of these um, uh, 
bar scene actors to turn and look at me like they want to fuck me. I think there's no way that this movie will work unless we make that change. Uh, he then takes them all outside and fights them one by one, mm-hmm. which, uh, you know, uh, if you're willing to suspend the disbelief in the first place, I think you're, it's, it's not that uh, high a leap to get to the fighting. Uh, I believe this was also filmed in Pittsburgh. This is one of the great, uh, along with uh, The Dark Knight Rises, one of the great Pittsburgh movies. I didn't know that about Dark Knight Rises. Mm-hmm. Hmm, learning something. Learning something. Uh, of course, the most important and the most long-lasting, the biggest event of this week is the victories of Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff in Georgia, the successful Woo! organizing of Stacey Abrams, Natasha Brown, and so many others. That means Democrats will take control of the Senate, and it means we fucking got Mitch. We got him. <sighs> we got him. Does he disappear now? Does he, like, shrivel up and then, and then fly away? Like do his uh, little, do the, do, the, do the tips of his uh, little shoes, like, curl up? against the side of the house that fell on him or no i think he gets smaller i think he gets physically half the size of his current size but he does not (laughs) disappear completely but the answer to that is you just move closer to the camera for him and then we won't be able to tell the difference (laughs) because it's a proportional shrinking he doesn't get shorter he just physically reduces proportionally you know well i I understand this is disappointing for him uh, to now be ostensibly House Minority Leader. Uh, at least he has his health, and that's good. He's okay, right? We, we don't yeah, get we an never, answer on that. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, look, I don't think you're ever okay uh, when your blood tries to escape through your hands. <laughs> right, um, right. When you put on a uh, Marvolo Gaunt's ring and the curse hits you like that— uh, That's serious. It's very serious. It's very serious. At 33 years old, John Ossoff will be the youngest member of the Senate. I hope the Senate are are just, this is so awful. Here we go. I hope the Senate serves avocado toast. But um, bum It's a millennial thing, folks. Did you see people uh, excavating... Like 2012 John Ossoff tweets, and one of them was like, "Hey Pitchfork, I'm expecting a review on the new Imagine Dragons." Album. I I love that tweet so much. I fucking love I, it. I, I love that it. he called himself a noob for life. What I appreciate about demanding that Pitchfork review Imagine Dragons, what yeah. I, it, it's such a perfect encapsulation of him at that moment because, um. It's it's fandom. It's begging for institutional approval. <laughs> it's very much like, don't you understand? You have an obligation to use your yes. platform for good. Yes. People don't know about this Imagine Dragons album. It changed my they life. Don't. That's right. I'm fired up and tired of the way that things have been. Us off the way that things have been. Us off. Would I'm that have freaking made the out. Monologue? If I if I, I if I pitch that, I'm just freaking out because I I didn't know that you were the lead singer. I'm embarrassed that you're right. the lead singer of Imagine Dragons. Well, you have to imagine it. That's the thing is we try to keep it. Uh, you know, we we want to lift it into the into the cerebral plane where everything just kind of happens inside your head and you don't understand or know or aware or aware of like the actual reality of the band. But it's all like we want it all to happen upstairs. I mean, here's the thing. Well, that's 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 in the name, right? That's why we're not. That's why we're imagining dragons. Correct. You know, Ossoff becomes the youngest serving member of the Senate since Joe Biden. One day, wow, you're the youngest senator. Then all of a sudden, it's the year 2064, and your eye explodes while trying to tell a bunch of whippersnappers in a primary debate why it's wrong to tear down a statue of Barack Obama. Because at the time, we all ate factory raised meat, and we knew it was a problem. But it's hard to explain now. You know. It is, it is really hard to explain. You never know what things will end up being the things uh, that were bad later on, 20, 30, mm. 40 years later. You ever think about that? You ever think about what is the thing that I'm doing at this very moment that I am completely unaware of that 20 years from now I'm going to go, that, I sh- that was wrong. Yeah, there's that, that was on- a thing that I should have understood was bad at the time. Did you read that Klosterman book about being wrong? Yeah, uh, he talks about that because like the factory raised meat is a good example, but it's it's mm-hmm. 
that's something we kind of understand the problems right now. But the, the harder ones to wrap your minds around, mind around are the ones we truly are not thinking about at all, yep. have no attention to, not part of the way we're thinking about the world that will, in hindsight, mm-hmm. look obvious. Look yeah. obvious. I'm excited to find out what they are. I can't wait. Now that Democrats control Congress and the White House, we can finally get to work on some of our top priorities, like stopping the pandemic, complimenting Joe Manchin, passing the Voting Rights Act, massaging (laughs) Joe Manchin's feet, abolishing the filibuster, abolishing every single pothole on every road in West Virginia, giving D.C. and Puerto Rico statehood, and most importantly, giving $2,000 a month to the residents of West Virginia and only the residents of West Virginia. In two years, Charleston, West Virginia, it will be like fucking Dubai. Oh, you don't think you need a bullet train? Between Martinsburg and Wheeling, are you stupid? Make it a hyperloop. Things gonna be spectacular. Uh, I always liked Joe. I think he's a really handsome guy. Uh, I'd like to know how he wants his coffee, and and I'd like to send him uh, just a package of his his favorite coffee, his favorite foods, whatever it is he needs, uh, if it'll help us. Joe, I've always appreciated uh, what you've brought to the table. I'm not sure exactly what that is. But I've always appreciated it. Joe, here's what we're going, here's what you can do. All right. Just write the number of EpiPens you want us to buy on a napkin, slide it across the table. We just want a public option. Hey, hey, West Virginia, all right? Put out your left arm. That's the Moderna vaccine. Put out your right arm. That's the Pfizer vaccine. <laughs> Now let's head to the brand new terminal of your beautiful airport to fly to the great state of Puerto Rico. (laughs) That's, I love it. Don't let's not forget the uh, the great state of the District of Columbia also. Absolutely. And uh, can we mix up? Can we mix up the vaccines? Can we do that? I know they're they're looking at that in uh, in England, but can they do that? Can we? Is that safe? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Can't be too careful. Give them both. Give them three doses in West Virginia. Also this week, Joe Biden named Merrick Garland as an attorney general. That's right, Mitch McConnell. The bitch is back. <laughs> uh, it's just incredible to have uh, to have Merrick finally with us in some capacity. Uh, it's poetic justice of some kind. Uh, I wish I understood how, that Mitch felt bad about it, but I don't think uh, he does, I don't... and I don't think he's hurt by it. Which is yeah, I agree. I agree. I actually don't think it has anything to do with the Republicans. I, I'm interested to find out like the full reasoning behind it, but I have to think a yeah. big part of it is just Joe Biden was like, "This guy got fucked. He's a smart, good guy. Let's give him a big job." You know, like yep. it really bothered him what happened in the Senate. It was a travesty. This is a person who was nominated to be on the Supreme Court, thought his life was going in this direction, and he just it's like a it's a good decision, and it also has the added benefit of of uh, uh, giving this person a chance to serve in a new way. Yeah, it must have been disappointing when you pick somebody who you figure the other side will definitely like because he's like a centrist figure, and then they're like, "Ah, actually, Uh we just don't like you. Yeah. It turns out there was no one you could pick because we're, we're, you know, we're um, uh, we're foreshadowing just how little we respect your legitimacy in any way possible. And and you won't be, you'll be shocked at how far this will go. Oh, is it, is it, is it early 2016? Just you wait. Just, Just you wait. wait. Who could Just have imagined? Uh, bean dad. <sighs> I'm I'm saying the words bean dad. Wow. And that's it. I'm done. Wow. Bean dad. Uh, that feels legitimately 40 years ago at this point. You know in uh, uh, Deep Blue Sea when, yeah, uh, who Samuel, forget? when Samuel L. Jackson gives his rousing speech? Mm-hmm. Smart sharks. Smart sharks. Super smart sharks, sharks that are figuring things out, doing math, hunting. Uh, They know how ovens work. They're very sophisticated. (laughs) The point is, I feel like Bean Dad happened in this one week before the 2020 shark. We thought the 2020 shark was dead. Bean Dad's like, what did we do Mm -hmm. some controversies like we used to do? What, like the old days? And then 2020 jumped up and like, nope, you're coming down with me. We're we're only halfway through, and we only had Samuel L. Jackson for seven shooting days. So he's he's uh, <laughs> he's he's chum now. Yeah, it's like the end of uh, the first Friday the Thirteenth, where uh, you know you think it's all over, and uh, 
the hero is like gently draping her arm uh, into the water of Crystal Lake, and then all of a sudden the rotten arm of of Jason reaches out and grabs her. Uh, and that arm being twenty twenty, there was so much, there was so much bean content over those few days. We have a bean dad who bragged about, uh, I guess, not feeding his daughter. Is how is the, is that kind of like the best? Is that the elevator pitch of what that was? Bean I dad. Think that's, I think was that's just, what people was were doing upset. a puzzle, and he bragged about not feeding his daughter. I think he yes, I think that he was hyping up a teaching moment and making it sound more grand and extreme than it actually was. Then he started getting attacked for it. Then he admitted that he probably exaggerated a lot of it. But by then right. it was too late because it's too late. The, the the search field was open for business. Right. And it turned look, a lot of people have been laid low. By a brief period of ironic, I'm so not racist, I can make these right. jokes, uh, that Twitter phase. It has taken down some greats, <laughs> and he was fell by it. It, it just rarely works, you know. The yeah. ironic uh, racism and anti-Semitism, uh, it requires a, uh, a context and, a, and an understanding of uh, who the uh, author is as an actual flesh-and-blood person, and that's, guess what, over the internet— impossible yeah it's a bit like the fist bump uh you can do it a dozen times ironically but by the 13th time you're just a person who fist bumps you know that's right that's correct you're just a person who fist bumps um and of course i, I have hilaria baldwin you know i <sighs> it also happened in this brief magnificent window in which 2014 was here trump <laughs> was gone we're back to these kind of controversies that are very silly and very light uh, but um, it turns out, obviously, she's not from Spain. She's from Massachusetts. <laughs> Method. <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> she's not from Mallorca. She's from Massachusetts. Mm, from, I, I'm still. I said both. The, the clip of her saying, "How do you say a cucumber?" We have tomatoes. We have um. A, how do you say it? Cucumber. Cucumbers. We Absolutely sends me over the edge. It's the best. It rules. <laughs> What happened inside of your mind that you're that you're at the that you're at the level of character development? You've so committed to the bit that you're asking for pronunciations on common vegetables. It's um, I had I've had I had two thoughts when I saw it. One, so she decided to commit to this character, right? Like that's that, and I look. <laughs> she she decided when she was going to marry Alec Baldwin that she was going to yes. have this opportunity to be some kind of a lifestyle influencer and she decided to do it as a Spanish person she made up right. an accent to create a brand who hasn't you know who among who us? hasn't done it who hasn't uh, what I find actually the most chilling is not forgetting forgetting how to say cucumber on television in the in the servant's <laughs> service of this character it's using it to name your children like that's in, that's fucking incredible that's incredible like i've been to paris you know but i'm not gonna name children croque madame <laughs> this is croque madame <laughs> this is it's just, i love that i also everybody went after Hilar ilaria and and yeah. fair enough. Thank you. But Thank you Alec, for, for the respect for that. Alec Baldwin, man, this guy has gotten too many fucking passes. He throws a punch at a photographer every every three to six weeks. He is a yeah. huge prick at every turn. He is as he is the this idea that he should be playing Trump. He is the most Trump like figure in public life beside Trump. And on top of that, on top of that, he is the biggest fucking apologist for some of the worst sexual predators in Hollywood. He is a scumbag and a dupe. I don't know if he knows if his wife is Spanish or not. I don't really care. It wouldn't be surprised me if he was in on it because he's a huge fucking asshole who doesn't care about anybody but himself. It also wouldn't be wouldn't surprise me if he was a total dupe because he's the arrogant type of person who believes he he gets people he knows how to see through them he can see the truth he can't be conned that's the exact kind of person who gets conned by Woody Allen and Ilaria and whoever the fuck else has duped him over the years 
fucking cannot stand Alec Baldwin. Ah, hold on. Are you telling me Alec Baldwin is bad? He's the guy who has made multiple uh, misogynistic and homophobic jokes like on live mics multiple times over the course of recent years. That guy is. Are you telling me that guy is bad? That's what I'm trying to tell you. And I'll tell you something else, Jason. I'll tell you something else. While not technically his fault, I will always blame him for the fact that the Hunt for Red October, <laughs> Clear and Present Danger, and Patriot Games is not a beautiful, singular Harrison Ford trilogy. That is what it should have been. Hunt for Red October is fantastic. It would be it's great. so much better without that simpering, smug, gravelly voice prick pretending he's Jack Ryan. Harrison Ford should be in that movie. All right. Jason, look. I want to end with mm-hmm. this because you know sports, all right? We both know sports. We're two people that know a lot about sports. So, That's what uh, everyone says. I'm going to do some sports jokes. You can tell us how we did. Tell me if I've gotten these. You see what you think. You think about my sports material. Wait. The Eagles were accused of tanking their game against the Washington Football Club last week when their coach benched their starting QB for a third stringer. An Eagles loss would have kept their rivals, the New York Giants, from clinching mm-hmm. a division title and playoff spot. Finally. Something to link the gays in football, high concept pettiness. Oh yeah, that's good. I like that. I don't think it's funny. Like it, it seems like it's true. It's true. It's factually accurate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, listen, I appreciate more and more in these trying times. Factual accuracy. Alabama Crimson Tide wide receiver Devonta Smith was mm-hmm. awarded the Heisman Trophy on Tuesday night, becoming the first wide receiver to win the award for nearly three decades. And I think it's about time we recognize the hard work put in by those who receive. I also appreciate it. It's factually accurate. And again, it's important that we have truth in comedy and in it's all really spaces important. in these trying times. That's where, that's what, where comedy comes from. That's where it comes from. It comes from truth. That's it right. It comes from truth. The NBA bubble in Orlando stands as maybe the most broadly successful management of the coronavirus Mm -hmm. pandemic anywhere in the world. Now, hear me out, Jason. What if we made America an NBA bubble? And if not, can I be drafted by the Phoenix Suns? Could you be drafted by the Phoenix Suns? Um, You know what? They're going to have a low draft pick this year because they're good. Mm -hmm. So maybe. I think you could. How's your jumper? Oh, it's very bad. You know, um, uh, um, when I was a kid, I was on the basketball team, but I had a problem, which is I had the arm strength to make the ball go forward, mm-hmm. and I had the arm strength to make the ball go up high enough to go in the basket, but I didn't have the arm strength to create the the parabola, the angle, like the arc, the yeah. arc to go both high enough and forward enough to go in the basket. And it's pretty tough when you're on a basketball team and everybody – your team, the other team, they know that no matter what you do with that ball, it is physically impossible for you to make the ball go in the basket, that you do not have that capacity. That's like, this is a joke that you're going to get as a huge sports fan. It mm-hmm. sounds like uh, sounds like Ben Simmons, and he's, a, he's an all-star. <laughs> Classic. Of course. Hey, uh, they should make the whole plane out of the NBA bubble. <laughs> Uh, oh wow (laughs) oh huh what's the deal with what's the deal with the nba bubble i make the whole plane out of it you know people who don't want to wear masks and stuff and don't want to get tested won't uh, come inside of it and then we can travel in peace uh without uh every cross-country flight turning into a political statement about how much you consume propaganda (laughs) <laughs> that's funny that's my identity uh and finally tom brady left the patriots to sign with the tampa bay buccaneers many people were confused by this move but i have a feeling it has to do with florida's lax kissing your son on the mouth laws but um bump i listen never, i love it we've never talked uh, about it because we've never talked about this before uh it's still super weird i th- here's my take Kiss your, yeah, that's fine. Like, you guys are close. You're close with your children. I love it. Show affection. I think that's very positive. I think it's weird to put it in the, in the dock. <laughs> I think it's 
weird to put it in the dock. That's my yeah. thing. Why yeah. are we putting it in the dock? <laughs> Why are we putting it in the dock? Why is it in the dock? That's a Why cut Why is it for in me. the dock? That's a cut for me, folks. When I get that first cut, I'm looking at it. I'm going, you know what? When I'm laying shirtless on the table and my son comes uh, from the opposite angle and kisses me on the lips for a long time and the camera's got us in a, in a really steady two shot, um, can, we, can we just take that out? It's um, weird. It just, look, I don't want to be I don't want to be a diva. Um, and if you feel right. like it's in, it's um, central to the plot of the film, right. I don't want to. Obviously, I'm, I want team player here. But my thought is uh, it's hugely embarrassing and deeply weird. Uh, maybe we should cut it. Just a thought. Just a thought. Just Tom Brady going to throw that one to you. Uh, just going to throw that. Throw that. Just QB that idea over to you in the editing booth. Maybe you can receive that. See what you think about it. Just a pitch. Just an idea. Um, uh, Trump for president. See you all later. Uh, Trump, Trump 2020. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. Remember that? Uh, do we forget uh, that Tom Brady had the had the MAGA hat in his locker? I think we here's, all just kind of like don't talk about that enough. Here's some things I don't forget. I don't forget the mouth kiss. I don't forget nope. the hat. Nope. I don't I don't forget that they cheated a lot. They um, did cheat a lot. They, they cheated a lot. Uh, I don't forget that. I, and I They're very good I, too, which is unfortunate because I wish they could be bad in all those things. But then they were also actually really good. And then their owner uh, was caught up in a uh, in a prostitution sting, which he has uh, been uh, totally, yeah, sort of absolved of any wrongdoing. He got off twice, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Got off twice. <laughs> oh, gosh. And with that, Jason Concepcion, thank you so much for being here. What a what a blast. What a delight. Uh, it's been an honor for me to be on uh, the show, which I, and I mean this sincerely, I think is like the best original theme song in podcasting. Yes. Shout out to the band Sure Sure, who crushed it in 2017. We then they're they're off touring, you know. They hit it big. They hit it big. Too big, too big to too big for us now. But we got them right as they were right as they were shooting up like a rocket ship, you know. They knocked the cover off of it. Just incredible and very catchy. Love it,